Hello, welcome to episode 164 in the series where I am programming an NES game live on Twitch from scratch. Uh, little news update first. Um, I, know, I know some people are against limited run games for a variety of reasons and stuff, but this is an actual homebrew game that they're distributing. Matt Hewson, um, who uh, is pretty active in the NES homebrew community and made From Below, um, which is a uh, highly stylized Tetris game. He is having his game distributed through Limited Run. Uh, and what's really cool is in the deluxe version, the art for the poster and um, this official guide is done by Philip. Uh, oh, I'm going to flub the name. What is F Summers? Yeah, Philip Summers. And if you don't know Philip Summers, he did a bunch of hand hand drawn game guides. I have the Zelda one, and he had done a Metroid one, where he had started a Kickstarter for a Metroid one and raised a ton of money, and then got contacted by someone who was not Nintendo. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That said, he should probably consider not doing that. Um, but the good news is that since then he's been working on other projects where he can actually build, um, he can actually make the guides for things that, uh, uh, that the IP holders have. Uh, so he did this one for cathedral, which is really cool looking and he's doing the one for witch and whiz. Um, and his art is really, really good. Um, so if you're interested in that at all, you should definitely pick up the deluxe version. It's a little bit, pricey at $90. Um, unfortunately, I mean, I get why, but it's also, it is a little bit expensive. Um, the plain cartridge version is, uh, that, that is not what I wanted to click. The plain cartridge version is, is 60, 59.99. Um, but it is a, it is, uh, I've played the, the, the pre-release builds of it for testing and it's it's a really fun game and it was a pico 8 game that he made um and uh he ported it over to the nes and it's just a really good little puzzle game a lot of fun um and like i said matt's a good guy so if it looks interesting to you and you're not opposed to buying things from limited run games uh it's definitely worth checking out um so there's <laughs> it's not a paid sponsorship. It was, I just decided that, you know, we should feature home brews. Um, also, uh, there was an article that was just published by Sean Robinson on video game Sage. Um, I should mention that too. If you're not, uh, following homebrew draws, uh, near, he also highlights, uh, different home brews including this new one that's coming out, Montezuma's Revenge. And uh, the development on this one was done by Felipe, who I mentioned uh, contacted me about working with me or talking to me about, you know, some things that he did to improve his process. And that's why we did our refactoring and, and some of the other stuff that we, you know, we were doing. So um, he, he wrote the code to port the game. Uh, and I didn't realize, but it's actually... Uh, with the original creator involved, which is really cool. So it's a good read. Uh, it's not too long. And then there are a bunch of other homebrews that are featured here. So you should definitely also check it out. Oh yeah, here's From Below, uh, which is Matt's other NES game that he released. Um, so that's uh, pretty cool. 8-Bit Christmas, the assembly line, Space Raft. So Definitely a neat thing to go check out in Guna, which just shipped recently after the very successful Kickstarter uh, trophy. Lots of lots of really great games. Check it out. Again, not paid sponsorship at all. Just really want to support the community because there are a lot of great games that are being made. And uh, it's pretty awesome that the people who are making them are really cool and uh, kind individuals. And they deserve to get the shout out. Uh, because of that. So anyway, long, long intro. Uh, let's actually get some coding done here. So let's 
talk about what we're going to do. So we made some changes to the way that the game code is structured. And part of that is, you know, we moved to this whole lookup process for processing uh, these um, different entities. And we split our code all, you know, all over the place into different, different files. Um, and also when we started implementing things for exporting the different pieces of the maps, which I didn't open, we broke some of the export logic because of changes we needed for the maps, uh, as well as the ability to export just the objects themselves and not the background map. So we got to fix this stuff because obviously we need to be able to export this content to the game without um, having to go in and change code all the time. So that's what we're going to start on here. We'll start with some of the easier stuff like the uh, entity logic tables um, or table. We need to process this uh, or sorry, we need to generate this as part of what the tool generates uh, because as we change the entities, we want it to provide this list automatically for us. We will, you know, obviously create the files that add these uh, subroutines as we need to, but that part is expected. I wasn't planning on making something that actually built the code for, for those entities, obviously. So, all right. And uh, let's, let's get to that. So right now we had some code that I think we were doing. So we had game entities .inc we were exporting. Do we still have that file here? <clears throat> so that gives us our, these are our constants that we're using, uh, that we're using to determine like, when we're checking to see if the type is a certain type when uh, uh, we are updating the entities list, for example, uh, and then determining which, well, actually we don't even do that here anymore. We don't use that to determine which uh, function we're calling because it's the, the list is in the right order. So this is the first lookup. This is the second lookup, et cetera. Um, but there is other code, I believe, that we are using those constants for. Um, but ultimately, this is the more important part that we're not doing currently, so we need to fix that. So let's um, let's do that. I think we can probably just do that <clears throat> in the same code here and just kind of simultaneously output it. should just make those constants but oops I don't know how much we're going to be messing around with this moving forward I think this might be it uh, so as long as the entities file and oh I've got to obviously do this since we've it's been been a while since we've messed with these uh, tools I thought it was my 
PC is really starting to um, struggle here. Just in general. Right, can I do that? But I can provide a message. Yeah, what is this complaining about? Oh, because I am not putting the right variable in. That definitely helps. The, what is this? The uh, logic tables file. Um, so basically we're just going to fail with a message that's relevant to whichever one wasn't open properly. I mean, shouldn't be a problem, but we don't want to continue if it is. So here we're setting up the main entities file, um, header, which probably add a little warning in case we forget somehow. Um, all right, so now the next thing we want to do is we want to update the top of the logic table file. Also, it's not going to be the same because we need to provide the segment and then define the label for the um, table and then we're going to go through and process just like we're doing with the constants here we're going to process this all right so um process problem minus one that should be dot word And then this is now going to be the label entity RTS table. Okay. Now let's just make sure we're okay. We're doing it in that file now. So this is the one file. This is the other file. And then basically for each one, we're just going to have um, two sets of two sets of writes that we're doing, which is one is for this table file. This is one's for that file which is pretty straightforward. So word process percent s, and then we don't need this for this one. And we do that. And then we just gotta make sure there's nothing at the end that we need to do for the logic table. So we just need to close out the file now. And that should be that. <clears throat> So what I definitely need to go check on is we have this project file. And so what we had done was we have the two, the two maps. Um, this is the repeat. That's the, this is the regular one. I'm going to change the order just because what I want to do is I wanted to process the regular map first in this case. Otherwise, it won't process this entity's file. Um, it actually probably... This actually doesn't matter if it's repeat scroll or not. So I should probably remove that check and then it doesn't matter that that's... The main thing is we, we only want to do it once. Um, there's some some... What we what we like to call tech debt in the uh, in professional spheres. There's some stuff that's been lingering for a while that we gotta we gotta clean up because I've been working so heavily on the assembly side of things that I didn't really get a chance to come back to fix this because it was easier to modify the data directly 
Um, and then we could worry about the. Then we could worry about the. What's it called? The um, the export tool. So we should always come into here. Let's just make sure that that actually happens. And then we can check the files after they process. All right. Come on, Visual Studio. You can do it. over there. <clears throat> uh, why are you going? Oh, because I'm using hitting the wrong key. I'm stepping into instead of stepping over. Alright, so all of that is good. Nothing nothing crashed on us. So let's go to the end and let's look at those files now. <clears throat> Hello. Really, Windows? I'm I was literally typing that and you were not highlighting the folder. Okay, so okay, good. There's a file. I should really make I don't know why I haven't done that yet. Um, I should make Visual Studio Code the default. I don't know why. It took me so long to do that. Uh, oh, did I not add the minus one? Yeah, I didn't. I just did percent %s. Okay. <clears throat> Simple enough to fix. Okay. So it's back. And now it's that. Let's just compare that with the live version that we're actually using. Where did that go? There it is. And, oh, here I am. I, I know I specifically said it and then I didn't include it. <clears throat> Gotta have the segment. Otherwise, it looks good. So, that. I don't care about that. Let's just run till it's done and go to code. All right, so we've got our segment there now. <clears throat> so, in theory, I should just be able to drop this in and replace and things should still be working. Insofar as they work. <laughs> Helps if the emulator speed is not at 4%. Okay, great. So that's all working the way it's supposed to. So that's good. That was easy. And then we had, there was also the entity constants in this, which is now updated as well. Uh, let's just, you know what? Let's just 
visually inspect this before we go crazy and uh, replace, just in case. Everything looks the same to me, except it's got the warning in it, so I think we're okay there, too. So that's good. Everything is looking the same. Okay, cool. Very good. So that was also easy. That was a non, pretty much a non issue with that change. Um, so, what else do we got? So, okay, so the level data is being generated manually right now. So we, I want to update that. I want to make that get generated by, based on what's in here. Uh, I probably can generate this. I can... I can oh. Yeah, I can definitely generate that by calculating calculating it based on the height of the map in tiled. So if I click on this for a second, the height is 450. And that's tiles. So that's times 8. And that, I think that comes out to E10. That is E10 exactly. Okay, good. So that can be calculated, which is what I thought I had done in the first place. Um, now these metadata tiles, the tricky thing about this, because I'm generating these automatically, uh, because they're being generated automatically, It's like I don't know what they are until they're generated, right? And then how would I know how would I specify them in the map? Because originally I was thinking, oh, I'll just make the map properties. But I've outsmarted myself here because now that we generate the meta tiles automatically based on the map content, then I don't know what value they're going to get <clears throat> until they got the value. Um, and I also don't have any way of assigning them here in tiled because in because basically they're totally independent of the content that's in the right hand side here and that was done on purpose so that we could kind of be a little bit more flexible with the way that we we're generating the meta tiles for for the for the maps so that it wasn't quite so rigid um So if the order of this changes, then obviously we have a problem where these two tiles are no longer the right tiles. <sighs> this makes me think back, like... I don't know, like, there's...
there's part of me that still wants to be able to use the fact that we're we can dynamically generate the meta tiles because there's the additional benefit of later we can then analyze the meta tiles and break them down further like the meta tiles are being optimized for what you see here but then we can further sub-optimize those or or re-optimize i don't know whatever we can we can do another passive optimization on those if we needed to but the thing is that because it's being done on the export export process of the map it makes it a little bit a little bit tricky to work with if we want to reference them directly at all part of me is wondering if i just should have just said okay whatever this is it's all well and good to want to do that, but we should have specified the meta tiles ahead. Of, they, they just need to be specified ahead of time like we were doing. But then the problem with that was that it was very cumbersome to have them split up across multiple different files when you're trying to um, work with them in here. Um, not that it not that it wasn't possible, but like it was much easier to just have one giant file of content that you can pull from because you can see like how it all fits together. Um, and then it means that Jordan can kind of put together things in a way that's easier for him, uh, you know, from an artistic perspective rather than working in these small 16 by 16 um, squares and then having to pull those together and then having to make sure that they all obey the right rules. I mean, eventually they all have to write, uh, obey the right rules, obviously, but... Um, you know, this all just comes down to me trying to create something that's as flexible as possible before we before we had a good sense of like how this map data needed to be worked out. Because I was so concerned and, and like focused on getting the tiles and the meta tiles created in a way that made sense for flexibility that it um, kind of trumped the map design. So... How do I do this? A meta tile is just, instead of using just individual eight by eight tiles, which is what these are over here, I'm using two tiles by two tiles. So if you look here, this grid is 16 by 16. This is four tiles in, a, in the square. That's one meta tile. So it's a little bit more efficient to store it that way because it's, one value represents an entire 16 by 16 area instead of an 8 by 8. Um, that's generally how most NES games store their tiles. <laughs> hey, Felipe. How's it going? Thanks for joining. Yeah, the... I guess it's just a happy accident because... Uh, I was supposed to do it Thursday and I couldn't. And then uh, Friday, uh, I just got sidetracked. And by the time nine o'clock nine o'clock rolled around, I didn't have I, I couldn't I wasn't ready to stream. So glad you able you were able to join. I know with your uh, time zone difference, it's pretty late for you. So that's uh, very cool. How many tiles can you use at once? Uh, you mean in general on the NES or in the game? For the NES, it's, uh, what is it? It's 512 total tiles at once can be loaded into the PPU. There's 
believe that's right. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, if we look at the PPU here, there's 256 over here and 256 over here. Um, and you can either have all the all the tiles be shared by the name table and sprite in one or the other, or you can split it so this is the name table, this is the sprites. That's what I'm doing. Uh, how many varieties? Um... Like right now, I mean, right now there is no limitation in terms of what I'm building. Um, it just is looking at, so the way it works is it looks at what's in here and looks at the data and compares it to other tiles that it's seen in the past, uh, meta tiles that it's seen in the past. And then if it determines that it's somehow different, it generates a new one. So like if I were to uh, take this and place that there, that would create a new meta tile because it would see that this it's, it's different than all the rest of them. I'm not sure I'm answering your question, but I mean, obviously you're limited by the amount of space you have on the PPU to, to store the different tiles, the, but there's no hard limitation to what I'm doing here. In fact, let's, uh, if we go look at the way that the asset tool has exported this, these, um, <clears throat> these files called meta tile one meta tile palette, all of these were automatically generated and it's generated 19 different meta tiles from this map. Most of the difference is obviously coming from like this area because the blue tiles and the blue, the wavelet thing are um, obviously the same and can be reused. And I can see what they are. I'm gonna go to assets. Can actually see what they are. Uh, oops. If I open them up this way, I can look at what what the different generated meta tiles are. It has the palette information, so you can actually see correctly what it looks like. So that's each of them. Why is that? How is that different than the other one? Some of these might also be old, so I'm not not a hundred percent sure that all of these are actually in use. But you can see they're just the different sections of of um, of the the things that were on the map. And with the grid, you can see this is one eight by eight. That's another eight by eight. Same thing. And then what I was saying is like, you can see here that these are clearly the same tiles. We could optimize further re you know, re optimize this that like anytime you have this tan colored tile, it's just stored once in this case, it's stored multiple times. Um, because it didn't, didn't really make sense to spend the time to do that further sub optimization um, or m second pass optimization right now. So I don't know. And this comes down to, this comes down to like, Is there a way, maybe there's a way to do this where maybe what I need to do is 
kind of make this a two-step process where the process because right now I just have it as a one-step process because the hope was like you you here's all the artwork here you you build your map you export and you're done um, the only other thing I can think well let me finish what I was gonna say um, but like I said, the problem with doing that is because everything is dynamic, then ultimately it means that you can't specify something like this in this JSON file because there's no way to know what that index is going to be, right? Like if I add, if I change this to have a different pattern of, uh, tiles here, it's going to add, introduce another meta tile, which means that the index of two and three is no longer valid. Right, it's going to become three and four potentially. So, then I could say something like, okay, well, we could annotate it on the map, but then it's the question of like, well, which map? Because we have this map here and this is the repeat scroll map but there might be another section of map here right so then it's like okay so if i want this repeat scroll to use a specific meta tile can i choose any meta tile on any map i guess in theory i could And then I just have to, in in this JSON file, identify it using some sort of label. I feel like I'm overcomplicating this a little bit. But the problem is, I mean, really what it comes down to is the reason, the reason for all of this, right? The reason for all of this was to make it flexible when we were building the maps. So that we didn't have to wor worry about the meta tiles until we got into a situation where maybe the, the number of meta tiles that were being generated was too large. And then we could look at, okay, what, what are we going to do to optimize that? Is it we're going to rebuild the art to or change the art to um, re-optimize what we have and then we can cut down the number of meta tiles? Are we going to implement the um, tile optimization that will further make the meta tiles smaller um, and not put a burden on us from the perspective of the design other than you know like obviously there's a limitation and that we we can't break um, but as long as you know but it gives us the flexibility of working somewhat more freely but then the the flip side of it is like i said it's like so yeah, that's great, but who cares? Because ultimately what's going to happen is pretty quickly, I think we're going to maybe hit that meta tile problem. And then it's going to mean that we're going to... And then it means we're going to have to spend a lot of time fixing the export by futzing around with um, futzing around with what we have in the art assets. Nestev is development for the original Nintendo Entertainment System in assembly code. This thing. Oh, I don't want to bring up a... I don't want to bring that up. No, just give me the image. Yeah, this. Well, that's the NES Classic, but, you know. Come on, Google, you're not helping me out here. This. I go get my actual NES, but it's buried in my closet. Alright, so... Maybe there's a compromise method here. Maybe the compromise method is, like, we've got this code that works well to break up the content into meta tiles that we can use for building our maps 
So maybe what we do is instead of doing that all in the export process once we've built a map, instead what we can do is take the art that we're planning on using, like something like this, run through and generate meta tiles based on this, and and then use the output of that in tiled as a tile set of 16 by 16 tiles to actually build this map. So when we're coming into this, the meta tiles are already d sort of done and ready. We know that we, we'll know how many we have and if we're going to have too many. So we can go back and re-optimize the art to be a little bit better about generating fewer meta tiles. But we also don't have to worry about like the ordering of the meta tiles and if we have too many after we're already done with the map. Like it seems to me that it's something we want to know before we get started building a map because we start building a map and then it turns out that the art assets we have just won't fit. Like if I grab this building and plop it down here and for whatever variety of reasons, I mean, in this case, he did a good job of doing tile optimization where we can, you know, grab something like the, this middle section and continue it, you know, to make a larger building or whatever. But we don't want to spend time building a map only to find out that, you know, not only did it not work, but like now the arrangement of tiles is wrong, which breaks the map later. It would give us some better sense ahead of time so that we could build the map with some confidence that there wouldn't be any major shifts in the way that the art is organized. And then still gives us the flexibility that, you know, Jordan can give us uh, a larger image like this that we can then use to build our meta tiles. Hmm. Because like I said, the big issue that I know he and I discussed was, or not a big issue, but a real kind of a hassle is that like when you, when you want to build this art, you kind of want to see it all together and subdividing it into the 16 by 16 things that he's going to work on afterwards is kind of a pain. Um, and he's not going to do it in the process of when he's working on it in a sprite because managing little 16 by 16 uh, files like that is is really not great but the the good thing would be that once we have those built then or once we have that analyzed and done we could generate one large file that has all the meta tiles laid out in almost like a sprite sheet but a meta tile sheet right where it doesn't look like this anymore. It's just the components that ended up making the individual meta tile files here. And then that would give us our working set for tiled here that we're working with. And then, and then once we know that that fits and it works well, if we have to tweak something, we can just tweak the the working sheet and not the original art if you're going to have animated tiles that will eat up some space in your pattern table if you're doing it by switch that will eat up some space in your pattern table uh yes i don't know if we're going to be doing background animations or if we're going to do that with sprites
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know because we're still obviously, you know, I still have to figure out some of these enemies and as I plan them out, we're going to have to determine what's the best way to actually do them based on, you know, the size and, and how they're going to be animated and if it's going to be like with a bunch of sprites at the same time and we, we're going to run into the eight sprites per scan line issue potentially. I did get a haircut. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> I was long overdue. Animate the background tiles. I mean, I will if it makes sense to do it and we need it for the game. I'm <clears throat> not going to do it just to be flashy. Um... Are they all background tiles? Do they, but they, they move what they do. They move tile by tile. They don't do smooth movement in between. That would be the only way that that would work. <clears throat> uh, no. So Felipe confirmed what, what you're saying. Um, but Felipe is that, do they, do they just move in the grid? Like, um, like they jump from spot to spot rather than smoothly moving around. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. That, that would be, that would be, yeah. Like you said, if they had to get around the limitation because of the sprites, that's, that's a good way to do it. If you don't care that the animation is, um, just kind of moving from square to square instead of going sm smoothly, um, for a shmup, obviously we want them, we want, a lot of the things that are happening to be smooth, but there could be things like, you know, we uh, talked about like an enemy turret that could be on here where the base of the turret is in the background. And then there's just the sprite for the actual can uh, cannon, the muzzle, whatever. Um, and then that would be just an object we place so that that would just be an object that we, we would place on top of the background art that we would place there. Um, See, this is the part that I've talked about before that's like hard for me because like from a technical perspective, I can whatever whatever it is I think we need to do, I can program it, but like knowing if it's the right thing to do is the part that's hard um for me and and from a game design perspective, obviously knowing like what we're going to actually put into the game to make it challenging and fun, like that's also the hard thing, that's why it's hard to make good games. Um but as far as like what's going to work for the background design, I guess that's what we need to do. And then that, that way, like I said, we have our meta tiles laid out here instead of just this giant picture. And then we know what meta tile will be where. And then we can. And then we know which one fits for the background so we can actually specify that or for the repeat scroll. Although, that's not technically true. Oh, I guess it is true because what we would have is just one big, I guess we would do one really large image of met or one really large palette of meta tiles. I mean, obviously we don't, We wouldn't be using all of them at once. Does that actually solve my problem? If I if I take the art for we'd have to do it for basically all the content that we would have in the game and run it through and generate meta tiles. Then we can have a meta tile palette here that you can choose from to build your levels. And then I could on the repeat scroll map here, add two properties that say what the repeat meta tiles are. So like zero would be blank, one, two, three. So we could say, you know, two, three, and then that would be that. 
that would be relatively simple to do as long as the main constraint there is like that this has got to be it there's not going to be six different meta tile sets the whole game set of meta tiles will have to be just this one thing um which means that we either have to process either have to put all the art into one file or be able to process multiple files to generate the sets of meta tiles which that's probably more realistic Ah, uh, so they they actually f they actually move between the four by four, so it's a little bit more smooth than going eight by eight. That's that's really clever. That's really that's really interesting. At the end of the stream, I want to take a look at that. We'll look it up on YouTube and see if we can look at that and analyze that. Um. Oh, cool. Thanks. Uh, I'll grab that. I'll grab that in the end after we stop recording. We'll, we'll or maybe we'll, we'll record that too, just to see, just to see what that looks like together. So, all right. So Is that what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to change the process. I mean, it doesn't change anything in the build process technically because it could just be another option that you pass to the asset tool as part of a separate export that you can do where you just say, "Okay, here are all my PNG files. Make meta tiles out of them." And it could be smart enough to handle it across images. And like I said, and then it would generate one file, final PNG with with all of that. And then the, and, and all the meta tiles individually. And then, and then we could go back to, it's a simpler process for processing the map because it, they're all using the same tile sets and whatever the value is in each map um, because if you look at like is that what is this is the world map one dot json if you look at go away if you look at this these these values are unique to the tiles that are here for this and then we have to like reprocess them to work for to reprocess them to work for generating the meta tiles and stuff like that but instead what i could do is i could say you know what there it's actually 16 by 16 for real And then use that to, and then it's 16 tiles by 450 or whatever, you know, uh, 225 in this case. And um, then we don't need to use a special version of tiled to handle the grid also because then it they really are 16 by 16 instead of being 8 by 8 and the tile set would actually be loaded up as a 16 by 16 instead of an 8 by 8 that would actually simplify things a lot on the map building side I think like it's still going to like that's the challenge of building stuff for the NES right is like you're you're still going to run into problems where you have too many meta tiles or you're trying to include too much detail it's just not going to fit with the tiles you have etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's not going to make that go away but it'll make the process of like as long as you're trying to be pretty aware and Jordan was when he created this map because he understands the limitations as long as you're pretty aware of like what you're doing you can generate tiles that will boil down to meta tiles that are pretty 
pretty uh, reusable and would do a decent job. No, well, he, he's doing the art because I'm awful at art. Um, so he gener he he's creating this uh, map artwork. I was going to work on the levels, um, but we, you know, we talked about like the stuff that we would need to to include. Um, all right, so uh, so now this means a lot of or not a lot of, but there's a decent amount of rework that's going to have to go into the process that generates the meta tiles. Because right now what it's doing, it's actually, I take that back. It's not that bad. Right now what it's doing is it's using the tiles in the, in the map JSON file to construct what the image looks like. So quick, quick recap of this, because this was done a while ago. Um, it goes through the map data. It uses the map data to reconstruct the 16 by 16 tile, uh, by blitting it into a 16 by 16. And then it looks to see if it can find a palette that matches that was already created. Um, if it doesn't, then it will create, a, it, it will create a new one. Um, and then it, let's see. And then, yeah, so then if it found an existing, if it finds a palette that exists from the set of palettes we have in the project file, this part will have to change. It will re-encode the image to use the indexed colors from our palette files rather than some other uh, like use of palette colors. So then once that's done, indexed image tile, it, it, let's see here. So it's actually, oh, it's, it was printing this out for the purposes of, right, okay. I forgot about this. So if it can't find a palette that matches, it prints out the list of colors so that we can see visually in a, in a text grid, like what the palette colors are that it was trying to use that, that didn't match. That was actually really helpful when, when re, uh, when generating the meta tiles, because there were problems where we were running into where things looked the same. Um, but it, it wasn't because some of the colors that were used were, Variants that were that looked the same but weren't and didn't get mapped to an existing tile. So then, or sorry, existing palette. So then we we bombed out trying to match it to the specific palette that was matched or could be matched. Right? We have a set of palettes that we work with four different palettes, and then it tries to match it against that. And if it can't, it it lists out the uh, the whole. Uh, image to allow you to track down which color is the problem. Yes, it would be a meta meta tile, or maybe it's maybe it's a a meta strip. I don't know. Um, and then the data that talks about the meta strips altogether is it, you know, is a meta a meta. No, I guess it wouldn't be a meta a meta strip instead of the meta meta tile. The, the strip would be just like a, a meta strip and then <laughs> I don't know. All right. So if, if, if it matched the palette, then it re-indexes the whole image. That's what I was talking about before the re-indexes the whole image to, um, or each of the tiles to match the palette. So that now, now we know that the colors are going to correlate to a palette we actually have. <laughs> um, and then we copy the palette file over and we write out the meta tile file and save it and then 
Yeah. And then I believe that is only done after we have processed each of the Let's see. I believe there was a process we re were looping through all the map data and correlating the tiles to a specific meta tile. Just got to find that area. The four by four tiles I'm talking about. This was, this was already after the fact because we had something called, oh wait, here it is. Yeah, so we have this thing called discovered meta tile. So basically as we, as we process the map, they get put into the discovered meta tiles. Um, uh, the discovered meta tile list um, and just to talk about this. So basically I just shifted all four tile values into one in 64 so that it's a simple comparison because the four eight bit are they eight bit? No, they're 16 bit. The 16 bit values fit into the in 64. Um, and so rather than comparing one tile at a time, I can just compare all four in this one operation. And then if we fa found it, then we know that we had that meta tile already. And if we didn't, then we add it to the list of discovered meta tiles. So, so this is the part that needs to, this is actually the part that needs to get changed the most because right now it's doing it based on, right now it's doing it based on the tile layout in, in tiled. Right, so it's looking and saying, okay, if this tile, th these four tiles, let's say these four tiles are all the value of one, then you know each of the 16-bit chunks of that 64-bit value get stored as one, and that's some huge number, whatever it is. And if we come upon that again, we know we found it already, so we don't have to save that off anywhere. But the problem is, if we do what I'm saying with the image, then we actually have to look at the image content because that's what's actually important. We have to look at the, um, the image data, the values that were used and compare the, the Im actual images. And then if they're the same, then we know that that's a meta tile from the PNG that we want to save. This is actually more, more complex than I was thinking. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's just, I forgot that we were leveraging what was in the map already to do this. The The thing that actually gets a little bit confusing is because we're doing it this way, if I grab a random blue tile from somewhere else that's different than the blue tiles that I'm already using, it doesn't know that it's a blue tile. It just thinks it's different because from the perspective of the Im index here, it is different than this or this or this. Visually it's not, but it is different from the perspective of the tile that's chosen there. So that would generate an additional set of meta tiles, which is again, problematic. That might be why we had two sets of meta tiles that look the same here. Somehow we, we grabbed the wrong one uh, and it's generating extra. That's Actually, one thing that might work in our favor here is that because we're doing it visually, we'll know we we don't have to worry about um, that problem. The only the only problem the only not a problem the only further thing is we you know obviously won't be doing in inter meta tile optimization. Uh. Now that I've talked about this for forever. Let's 
So it's just the RGB values that are going to be loaded. And then I need to look at the strips of, it's going to be a stride of 16 image, 16 pixels. I'll probably want to pull them apart into their own 16 times 16 arrays and then compare those two although it's 16 by 16 RGB values um, Or actually, does Tiger support extracting? I don't know if it does. Like, if there's any way to. I know you can blit onto the image. Because if I can, if I can extract. Oh well, I could do that. I could, I could cheat and create 16 by 16 that's actually a much better way to do it so rather than yeah that's way better so rather than me doing that work writing the code by hand similar to what we're doing in another part um, we can traverse the image 16 pixels at a time across and 16 pixels down following the grid uh, and then blit you know, essentially copy the content of, I should be doing it over here on this image. Take the content here and put it onto a 16 by 16 and then compare that against another 16 by 16 that we blitted. So I don't have to do the copying manually out of the master image, just let the, let, let the image library do it because it should be able to handle it in exactly the same way I would, except I don't have to write the code. And then that comparison is relatively easy because I'm just running through and checking to make sure the pixels are exactly the same. Um, let's start with that. Let's start with that because I want to I want to see like if I just do the most basic implementation of that like what does that actually yield for us in terms of what it thinks the number of meta tiles are um, obviously it's not perfect but it will yield a result that we can then base our next decisions on or give me something to think about for the next stream um, and then, and then from that, we can create the tile set. So right now, the tile set here, you can see in the little preview is um, using this file. And it's just got a width and height. And the tile width is 8 and the tile height is 8. We, we can, we'll be able to switch to 16 by 16, which will also help things. Because then we know that we're not, we're not, we can make the map 16 by 16. We can keep this 16 by 16 and that'll help keep things consistent. Let's try doing this with the, let's try doing this all with the intention of building a new map layout first, before I change any code that's going to run this in the export tool, because I don't want to spend too much time revamping the way we export and then run into some other issue that's going to be a huge problem and then we have to do something else and then I've wasted time rebuilding other export processes based on something that we haven't really fully vetted out. Um, I think this will work. I think this will be okay, but let's, let's give this a try first. <clears throat> Right now I'm going to make it just take one PNG as a, an argument. In theory, we should be able to take multiple. 
and process them all together at the same time. Um, but let's uh, walk before we run here. So we'll add this whole, this new check for PNG to tiles. That's our tool action that we've added. Let's, um, I'm deliberately doing this to kind of section it off from the rest of the code just so that, <clears throat> I mean, it is gonna be a different process anyway, so I think we want to keep it separate anyhow, but um, also just for the sake of working on it. And this file is huge and should probably be refactored too, but that's not today's problem. All right, so obviously we need to load this file. Or, well, you know what we could do? Let's, let's just do this by putting this in a different function just so it's separate. <clears throat> um, no better time than today, right? here so that it knows that the thing exists. Um, do I have some other ones here? I do. Okay. All right, so it's gonna call PNG to tiles, and we're gonna have that here. Um, and I need, I need, I need, I need this. Oh yeah, it's technically extern, isn't it? Oh, okay. PNG tiles. Is it not? Uh, oh, why didn't that get added here? I guess because I didn't do it through. Where did that go? Oh, 
Where did it save that? In the base directory? Oops. That's weird. Um here, you go here. Add existing I, I knew I, I knew I should have done it through right clicking there. I just didn't because I've been I don't know, because I, because I didn't. <laughs> Unexpected tokens following preprocessor directive. important right now so all right So that's going to load our image in for us. And then we're just going to loop through and grab our 16 by 16 chunks. I guess we should check to see that it's really 16 by 16. The whole image, I don't want to have to deal with any weird sort of it's not sized the right way, so should I just not process it or whatever? Just make it a factor of 16 by 16. So um, if uh, target file image width mod 16 um, do, 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 doesn't equal zero or complaining about There's that What the heck is going on? Why Why do you do this to me? Oh, because I have I'm getting tired and I'm doing stupid things. That's why. <clears throat> okay. I can do it the other way. typing today <clears throat> okay what do 
you talking about? Get out of here. That is not the key that I wanted to press. What are you complaining about? Expression void. Where? Why? Why is this different than any of the other ones that I was using where it wasn't a problem? Or is it complaining about that too? And I'm just so done that I am not even paying attention to those anymore. Could be. <clears throat> Yep. That's weird. I thought... I thought that was working. I thought that was actually including the assert string when the assertion failed. Uh, msvc assert message. There is this stuff. Am I just losing it? There's no such thing. Conflating it with, um, I, I might just be conflating it with, um, unit test assertions that I used to use when I was using C++ regularly. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to worry about that right now. It does matter that we want to check those things, but we don't have to worry about the message at all. More so just for sanity here. So So I'm going to use tiger bitmap to make a 16 by 16. And then we are going to just basically, we're going to blit. We're going to blit the images. We're going to also keep a list of <clears throat> our images. What are we using? Are we using standard vector or deck? We're using standard deck to keep track of. I thought that's what I was doing. I couldn't remember if I add some other better way. So we're going to use the deck to keep track of all of our found uh, meta tiles here. And then we're just going to do some basic looping here. So, um, <clears throat> so like I said before, we're just going to loop through the image based on the height and the width and the fact that we want 16 by 16 tiles and <clears throat> This way with just the image and the image uh, inner loop. Okay. So 
so now tiger bullet. Um, the destination is working image. The source is target file image. The destination X and Y are always zero. And then the source X and Y are X and Y. And the width and height are always 16. So that will give us our image chunks. And then we just want to compare this against the existing images that we've <clears throat> found. So not, not an efficient process because we are chopping this up and then we have to compare it against every single other image we found. If we find that this is getting really slow, we could obviously do something like figure out how to write some sort of hash or something. Um, or actually, maybe like a checksum, a checksum might be better as a hash some sort of some sort of mechanism for for doing the comparison i don't think it's going to be that bad and also this is like a one time thing or or very it, it's not going to be necessarily just one time but it's going to be it's not something we're doing every time we're building the application so even if it takes a little bit longer to do compared to when we want to actually compile the application over and over again while we're doing testing it's not that big a deal so, okay, so we've, we've done that. So now what we want to do is we want to iterate through our uh, send it just like that. Well, let's, let's create our list. Um, Hmm. <laughs> and this is just going to be these guys. <clears throat> there we go. I just had to specify the type. Um, so the iterator is equal to working list dot begin. And then iterator does not equal working list dot end plus plus iterator. Uh, we should definitely do a check to see if working list is empty. Um, not size. Is there a count? Right, sizes size is the size of the it's not the size of the deck. Well, it is the size of the deck, but it's not the number of elements, is it? I can't remember. Some of the structures are different. Some of them the size is how much memory is allocated for the structure and the element count is like the count. <clears throat> okay, so that is the number of elements. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I've run into that problem before. And you get the same size every time even when you're trying to insert things into it and then you're like, why is this not working? And it's like, oh, because that's the size of the buffer, not the, si the number of elements that I'm dealing with. If size is zero... Or let's do this way. If size is not zero, so don't bother checking the list if you know we don't have anything in it. Otherwise, we'll go through and check the list, and then we say if uh, not match found, then we want to add it to the deck. So working list um, pushback uh, working image and then working image we're going to allocate a new one 
because we are pushing back the pointer so working image being changed doesn't affect that we want we we want to store that pointer off and put it into this list and then <clears throat> that will have the meta tile stored into it now the other thing we need to do at the end of this uh, just for the sake of good housekeeping here is we want to make sure to iterate through and um, clean up the deck so um, auto I should have done it this way in the first place I guess uh, we can change this I, I sometimes forget these um, exist and I know there's another way through um, standard library to to basically pass this function to it so that I don't even have to do the for loop technically like there's a for each I believe um, with iterators but that's okay for now um, this will also be a little a little cleaner to look through um, I just need to do the tiger free although I technically it doesn't maybe matter but if for some reason we're calling this multiple times it will um, unless we're passing this back and need to use it again or something like that but like if we're pass let's say we pass in a list of files in here um, well that shouldn't matter either way anyway it's good practice to do if we're thinking about it so uh, all right so the comparison is just going to be the RGB values that are in the the working item and the working image so yet another <laughs> loop within this loop within the loop within the loop that's why I said this isn't efficient because it's not it's pretty pretty piss poor performance um, is it picks that is what is that the buffer with all the pixel data so that is yeah and that's just going to be with times height okay so <clears throat> oh that's always the same um what is that 16 by 16 is it 256 yeah it is okay I thought that's what it was, but uh, all right. So for just compare away pix i equals what is it? It is. <clears throat> Pointer vref iter picks i. So if so actually if if this doesn't, then we break. And then if we made it through, what's the matter with this? T pixel t pixel. What is it? I got to do dot r. Yeah. Okay. Does that not work either? Why? That's just a struct. That should, oh, that was just the old error message. Okay. So I need to do this for, well, let's see. I mean, in theory, I could just grab. I'll just do it this way. There are probably better ways to do this compared to just comparing the R, G, and B like this. And I guess the alpha also. But um, I 
I forget. I think this is all C code in Tiger, which means that those bytes will be alloc um, aligned along <clears throat> the same. So it'll be just four contiguous bytes and not, um, there won't be any other stuff in there like there might be in C sharp, uh, sorry, C++, but I don't want to deal with that in case I'm wrong. Um, it's just more clear this way for now. So if any of these are wrong, then we're going to break. And then we're just going to say if match. Um, so the only thing is we just need to Um, all right, so if no match, what do we want to do it this way? Do it this way instead. So it'll set it to false if it didn't match. And then if we say if match, I guess we could do that with match found. What am I trying to do here? I'm just, sorry, I'm just kind of running out of steam here and staring at the code and not thinking this through. No, I want to do this every time because I want to know if we made it through and we actually found the match or not. So if we found the match, then we say uh, match found true um, because we want to say that at the end of this list if match found or if not match found then we want to push it onto the list right also if we found a match then we want to break out because we're not going to check again for the rest of the images so we if it's not found then we want to push it onto the working list. Uh, oh, we're doing that already out there. Let's see, this is iterating through that. Right, so this is a good use case where we're actually setting it and then we're going out and then Right, so this will only be set to true if we get to this case where we found a match. So we set match found to true and we break, which is going to break us out of here, which is going to get us there, and then we're going to push that, and then, yeah, okay. That's fine. I'm going to print this message so that we can have that there, but obviously I'm going to set a breakpoint and actually <clears throat> examine this and see what we're doing here. Oh, some of these things that I'm doing as mistakes are coming from having worked in other languages for too long where they do stuff like that, where like size is, is a, a property or a variable rather than um, a function like it is in C++. In a lot of ways, like C++ is kind of out of date compared to like C++ and TypeScript and, sorry, C Sharp and TypeScript and what they can do with these properties. Um, so, not that that's necessarily good or bad, but it definitely messes me up because I forget and then I make stupid mistakes like that. Uh, all right, so it's that PNG. <clears throat> so 
So I want to change this to be PNG to tiles and then we'll do the full path. I guess I should do the right type of back uh, slash there. So the users, Michael, desktop. All right, here goes nothing. All right, so far we got what we're looking for. We loaded it up. It is not null, so that's good. So then we're gonna check the width and the height. And we already ran into an issue because it is not a factor of 16, which is fine, right? Like 384, is that what it said? So 384 divided by 16. I can't be right. It couldn't be 384. 384 mod 16 doesn't equal zero. Am I? Oh, because I'm in the programmer calculator. It's not giving me fractional values. 384 divided by 16. No, it's still 16 times 24. 384. Okay, so. What is my malfunction here? Mod 16 should just give me, shouldn't that just give me zero then? What is going on? I have jumped the shark. Come on. Three, eight, four, mod 16, zero. Okay, I'm not crazy. <clears throat> Target file image with mod 16 doesn't equal zero. Does anybody see it? What am I doing? That's stupid. That's causing this. It is zero. Oh. It's not fail on true, it's fail on false. Sorry. That was dumb. You're asserting that something is true, not asserting that you want to end because it's false. That was dumb. Sorry about that. So there's our working list. So now we're just going to go through, we're going to do our blit into the working image. Um, let's just take a quick look. I think we also need to, if I remember correctly, we may need to, I don't know if we have to clear this out or not. Um, but we'll see. All right, so now <clears throat> going into this, we know the working list is zero, so there's no match found. So we're just gonna push this into the list and then we're gonna get a new one onto the list. So now we're gonna do another blit. Go back and look at, let's look at this image because we have not looked at. the whole image here. So this is the first part of it that we grabbed. And we're gonna grab this next section of it and we're gonna compare them and they should not be equal. So already it's not correct. Like it, it didn't match so we're just gonna go through and we're going to add it. So that all seems somewhat reasonable. Let's see how many things did it come with? 143. So that's not, that's okay. I don't think that's worst case scenario, right? Like if, if 
we figured worst case scenario is it generates a, every new everything as its own meta tile. Um, what is the size of that image? I'm not saying it's good either. I'm just saying it's not. I don't think it's generating the worst case scenario because it's totally off the rails. So it's two, 384 by 240. <clears throat> 384, we said that was 24, 240. Come on. Why are you doing this? 240 divided by 16. 15. 24 by 15, 24 by 15, 360. So we are getting some different meta tiles because we're only getting 143. Okay. So that's that's kind of what I expected to see because there's a lot of extra stuff here like on the sides and whatnot. So now what we need to do do I want to do just one really long PNG or do I, I guess it doesn't really matter for the purposes of what tiled is going to do. So what, what we would need to do is we need to do something like this where we'd say, okay, here's our final image, which is, uh, the width is working list size times 16. And the height is 16. And then we're just basically going to blit all of these onto that image. So um, here, this is a perfect opportunity to reuse this list. We can say tiger blit to final image uh, from this guy. Uh, the destination X will be X, which we don't have yet. Y will always be zero. Uh, source and uh, those will all be zero, and that's going to be 16 by 16. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have an unsigned int 16 here. Or sorry, int uh, called X, which will initialize please. And then this will just be... We'll add 16 to it every time. And then the final thing we want to do is tiger, what is it? Save image, save image. Um, I don't have a particular, we need, we need to come up with an actual location for this thing, but um, Let's just get this exported so that we can wrap things here. Let's just see if we get something that is <clears throat> reasonable looking. It's going to be a long strip of images, but we want to see if we take that and put it into tile to make a tile set of 16 by 16 are we going to get something that actually is usable okay that all looks that all looks good actually uh, here's tiled let's let's create a new tile set with this uh, strip uh, image strip test uh, based on an image, the source will be, where's my desktop? Sixteen by sixteen. And yeah, that actually all looks pretty good. I mean, obviously there's stuff in here that we don't need. Because of the 
<clears throat> palette tiles and stuff that Jordan put together. But it does look like it is working the way I wanted it to, which is not bad considering that was the first attempt. Um, all right, so then if we create a new map and we said it's 16, yeah, so let's, um, did I have one? Yeah, replace that. And then, oh, it's already here. Oh, <laughs> I'm surprised it doesn't do a wrap of the tile set. no way to do that all right I'll have to what we'll have to do is we'll have to kind of figure out a way to make that work a little bit more cleanly um, by by creating the by creating the uh, image as an actual uh, rectangle rather than just this long strip of images let me let me close out this version of tiled and open the actual real version of Tiled here for a moment. So, where is... So that's here. So now this is 16 by 16. And if we take this, I can just grab this and go, right? I can just say... You know, I want to have this here. Oh, I don't want to flood fill this though. Let's, um, yeah, definitely need to make this output as a, um, as a box so that you don't have to do this. I, for some reason, thought that it would reflow the tiles, but apparently not. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm just looking for like a solid green color, but I do not see, I do not see that, but I can do something like this and then like that is honestly a little bit wasteful that we have that there but that's okay um, and then I assume no that's not the right tile where are the tiles that allow me to continue the water line here yeah oops that's handy and then I can grab this and put this like this. And, oh, and there, there's our usual little wavelet. And then, I guess we need Some of this it's not clear to me viewing it this way, like how this fits together. Um, so that, that'll be something I have to kind of puzzle out like as I'm going, if it's going to be, if there's some way to make this a little bit more clear and clean, um, or maybe, maybe we just need the ability to kind of rearrange some of the meta tiles here because like you can see that they fit together but are not always you know adjacent which makes it a little bit tough to use cleanly and and that's certainly nothing that Jordan did it's just that you know because of the way that I'm messing with this right now. Um, I'm just not understanding exactly how this all sort of fits together, but 
that'll be part of the learning process, I, I guess. Um, but I do like that I can, you know, drag those strips of tiles, and then I can also select and do that. This is definitely a lot easier to work with than what I was doing before. Um, not sure how that gets transitioned to the water there, but then we also have stuff like this. So it'll just be sort of the process of experimenting with how we would want to do this, but that seems that seems pretty good. And then, you know, and then the the real question will be like is this actually going to fit? <clears throat> because there is the challenge of... See, that's pretty cool that I can just grab that strip of meta tiles and place it like that. Oops. So that was already there, but oh, that's what I was looking for. This one. <clears throat> so yeah, so I can do that. I can start to kind of reconstruct some of the some of the elements in the actual map, and there should be like a corresponding road. This might just be like a learning curve thing for me as I'm constructing this. Um, but there should be some sort of, let's see, corresponding map piece to the road that I've got there that I can drop in. Is that it? Yeah. Oops. Like that. I mean, and <clears throat> some of the stuff we're going to have to work on in terms of like being able to reuse like the road tiles or stuff like that so that we can actually be a little bit more flexible and how things are constructed on the map. Um, other things are going to be, are gonna be fine. So that's pretty cool. That's the building glass. I mean, so I'm going to have to obviously be referencing like the original to look at like, okay, so that was, you know, the building glass. So the way that that's constructed is we have the four by four strips of glass, but then there's also a third row of glass that is going into the road like this. Um, which is you know, leads into like this part of the building. And then we have a top that's over here. I think once it's laid out um, a little bit <clears throat> less um, long, it'll also be easier to work with because I'll be able to see more tiles at once and make some sense of that but that's kind of cool I 
think that's I think that works. I think that gives me something that's actually usable. Um, that's fine. I don't care. So what should I do? Should I do it by should I just say like one, two One, two, let me go back to this here. So at this size, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's just say ten, so 160 pixels wide. So every tenth one, every 160 pixels, we can increment the Y value by 16. just so that we can make it a little bit more interesting to, or a little bit easier to identify. Just do the same thing here. X uh, mod 160 equals zero plus equals 16. Um, oh, except the, this is not right. So this is going to be This is going to be divided by that size, divide by 10. Right, is that right? Size divided by 10. So if it's Less than 10, we're going to get it 0, which we don't want. It should be... The width should be just whatever the width of the thing is. So um, size is less than 10. Then working list size... Dot size times 16. Otherwise... We want working list size divided by 10. So that'll give us um, the number of items or width, the width of the number of, oh, the, no, it would just be 160. What am I saying? So that'll just be 160 um, because it's just 10 items across and then uh, that's where this is where we want to do um, so working list size is less than 10 then it's just 16 otherwise it is working list size <clears throat> divided by 10 which is going to give us how many how many strides we have times 16 and it's okay that it's going to get truncated because we don't care there's just going to be some empty space there. Right? Right. So now, why does it look like that? Because, 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 because x does not get reset. x is equal to zero. So it should really be that. I gotta reset x, otherwise it's gonna draw off the image, which obviously does not work. There we go. That's better. So now, oh, did, it, did it recreate this? for me. That's rather advanced of it. Nice. Okay. Well, that was that was easy. So obviously we have these extra blank tiles that uh, are not used. But the rest of it does that look correct? I think so. Can just try and kind of recreate what we have 
for the from from the original file, right? Yeah. And then we have the shadow, so we're gonna have two two shadow tiles there. And then we're gonna have the forest. So there's just this one forest tile, but we actually repeat it a couple times, four times in fact. Then we have the forest transition here, and then this, and then this. Where is our water? You can just do a flood fill of the water. All right, so now this is the rest of the building. Whoa, not flood fill though, please. That's the rest of the building there, right? Uh, I'm too far over, there it is. Yes, that is the rest of the building. And then we have, once again, this road strip which goes, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, or it's actually one, two, three, three down and then we're going to have some additional road stuff we're going to have this oh it didn't actually select that we have this goes here we have that and then what's the bottom of the building this stuff yeah okay So far, this is working essentially the way I was thinking. So then we have this tile, and that goes down one, two, three, three of those. We have the little garden with the fountain, which is these tiles here, and then these tiles here, and then. What is the rest of it? It is some repeated bottom tiles. So we have this and that, and there's the fountain. And now what? Beyond that, some more road and the top of a building. So the top of the building is that stuff there. Uh, that doesn't look... Oh, that's the edge. <clears throat> Excuse me. That would be that. And then... That's this. What else do we have? We have a little piece with some road in it. Where is that piece? this here. Um, is that it? Or is that, is there a bug? Do we have that somewhere else? Oh, we have it somewhere else here too. So, okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. It would be lower in the image. I gotta get rid of the extra stuff that's creating some of the confusion for me, but it looks like this is all this. And we have this, but anyway, so like I'm able to be, I mean, I'm able to piece this all together, it looks like. And then if I look at this, for example, I see, oops, I can see that this is just all the same. These bottom ones may be different. That looks about right. And then we have like kind of a stair step pattern that's used. I wonder if that is repeated here. Sort of looks like it.
that looks like that's maybe, oh, maybe like that. And then we have a green. That would be this. And then, so we have that section there, which is, I think, the same. So there's just another piece of forest that is not right here somehow. Right. I mean, that, that part's not, <clears throat> that's not ultra important to what we're, what I'm doing here. It was more so just the exercise of seeing, you know, can I reconstruct this? And the answer is yes. And again, I've got some, it's a, it's definitely easier to see what I've got here when I'm looking at it like this. Although I did, I say that and I just screwed it up. Oh, because I'm putting that on top and that should be there. So is it shifted over? Should it be shifted over? Yeah, it should be shifted over. And then this should be over here. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, not, not critically important. Um, the main thing is that this got exported correctly and we have our meta tiles and if we strip off the extra calendar stuff, um, the extra imagery that's there um, on the right hand side, we would further reduce some of the tiles that are used. And that looks okay. So now if we have that, we can then turn those into actual meta tiles and do the same lookup we're doing where we're um, comparing that against the palettes we want to use and turning it into meta tiles using those palettes and saving those off as actual meta tiles and then we know or should be relatively certain. Let's see if we go to where is this is called testing MT. If we look at this JSON file, yeah, so we're getting now values that actually correlate to what the meta tile number would be, right? So if we look at this, like this is, this is meta tile one, and that's in this top corner here. <clears throat> and if we take, yeah, and then it's meta tile two, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we know that that's fine, or at least looks re relatively reason reasonable. So that would mean then we could just use the meta tiles as they exist, as they are exported with that ordering which means that on the map, I have the ability now with some certainty to, to say like, um, you know, map, map properties, add a custom property and say, you know, uh, repeat scroll. Um, blank, you know, and look at what tile it says, right? It says what tile I'm hovering over somewhere. Maybe, possibly. Oh, the ID is there. Um, although the ID is off by one. So I could say, okay, this is our, this is our blank one, which is 10, so it should be 11. So go to map properties and say, this is 11. And then for the other repeat scroll tile, we can do that too. And we can save that off and know that that's actually, that's actually reasonable because we know that the tile set is gonna be consistent because we're gonna have it all for all of the, 
for all of the maps. I think that makes sense. I'm going to think about that a little bit. That went a lot longer than I expected it to. Stream-wise, hopefully some of this made some sort of sense to you guys. Um, I think this is a better approach. I think this is going to make it easier for me to construct the maps while still giving Jordan the ability to have flexibility in terms of how he creates his tile sets. Um, and then, you know, I can actually look at like how that breaks down separately from building the map and be like, okay, we have too many tiles or too many tile sets and we can start looking at, you know, do we need to, do we really need to have, you know, two different types of road intersections or, you know, whatever the case is, right? We can start looking at it and scrutinizing what we have versus the other way where I can, you know, build an em endless set of combinations of these tiles and end up with the unfortunate side effect of that it's generating way too many meta tiles. And if we change anything, then it's going to rebuild the map or something like that. Whereas here we could, you know, very easily just say, okay, well, we're not going to use this tile anymore and we update the image that it got generated based on you know he can look at this and say okay so this is what we need to change and so now i'm going to go in and i'm going to change this you know one of these tiles to to be something else that we can reuse elsewhere right because uh, that's the other thing is obviously we're not going to load in Content from meta tiles that aren't used in the set. So, yes, that was that was a lot. Um, <clears throat> but I'm gonna wrap here because it's 11:30 already, um, and I'm exhausted. So, as always, thank you for watching. If you'd like to reach me on Twitter, I'm at Clarivus. I am uh, Zelius on Video Game Sage, but uh, Clarivus on Discord, you can email me, zelius at gmail.com. Um, feel free to ask questions, post questions on the recording on YouTube. I'm happy to answer. I try to do it as soon as possible. Um, yeah, and I will see you all on Monday where we will pick up from where we left off here. So thanks for joining. Miralupa, thank you. Dark Cod Cod, Felipe, thank you. Um, Brandon, thank you. And everybody else, um, Andrew, I know you're on there lurking. Uh, thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Take care, and I'll see you later.